Compression ultrasound of the lower extremity venous system should always be done in the transverse orientation using B-mode ultrasound imaging. Typically, the lumen of a vein will appear anechoic and will become completely obliterated by adequate pressure applied with the ultrasound probe. However, a thrombus will prevent the lumen of the vein from being completely collapsed. Sometimes a thrombus may be visualized as a hyperechoic mass within the lumen of the vein. Keep in mind that sometimes a thrombus can also have an anechoic appearance and therefore will be undetectable by B-mode ultrasound imaging alone. Compression of the vein can conclusively help to identify the presence of an anechoic thrombus that would otherwise not be detected. If a thrombus is suspected, then imaging in multiple planes is necessary to confirm it, as well as using color Doppler to document lack of flow. The popliteal vein is formed by the confluence of the anterior tibial, posterior tibial, and perineal veins approximately 4 to 8 centimeters distal to the popliteal crease. The popliteal vein becomes the femoral vein as it enters the adductor hiatus. At its proximal end, the femoral vein joins with the profunda femoris to form the common femoral vein. The common femoral vein travels cephalid and passes under the inguinal ligament to form the external iliac vein. The great saphenous vein drains into the common femoral vein from the medial thigh at the saphenofemoral junction. Views should be obtained with the patient in the supine position. When possible, the patient should be in the reverse Trendelenburg position with the table tilted at approximately 15 to 30 degrees. Have the patient bend his or her leg outwardly as shown. The leg can be supported by a rolled up towel or pillow if necessary. A high frequency linear array probe with a range of 6 to 13 megahertz is suitable for this exam. Begin scanning just below the level of the inguinal ligament. Orient the probe so that the probe marker is pointing toward the patient's right. In this transverse view at the level of the saphenofemoral junction, the great saphenous vein, the common femoral vein, and the common femoral artery are visualized. The artery is pulsatile, while the vein is not as pulsatile. The lumen of the veins should appear anechoic. Adjust the gain settings to make the lumen appear anechoic. Test the compressibility of the veins with adequate pressure. Though the compressibility test should be done primarily with grayscale imaging, color Doppler imaging can be used as a tool to help assess for thrombus. You may be able to see partial thrombus or recanalization in chronic DVT patients. One or more of the superficial inguinal nodes may be seen in this region and should not be mistaken as a thrombus. Next, place the probe approximately 7 centimeters distal to the popliteal crease. The probe marker should be pointing toward the patient's right. In this transverse view, the popliteal vein and popliteal artery can be seen. Test the compressibility of the vein with adequate pressure. Continue examining the popliteal vein distally, compressing every one centimeter until the level of the perineal trunk. Next, test for normal flow within the femoral vein. This should always be done from the long axis of the vessel using spectral Doppler imaging. The blue color demonstrates the direction of blood flow in the vein. Phasic variation seen in the spectral waveform demonstrates a normal response of the venous system to respiration. It may be necessary to ask the patient to deeply inhale and then exhale in order to make the phasicity of the waveform more apparent. Do not ask the patient to hold his or her breath. Venous flow can be augmented by squeezing the calf or dorsiflexion of the foot. Here we see a normal response of the venous system to augmentation.